Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to Voice of the Prophet with Baba Apostle. We want to welcome you to another service of Voice of the Prophet. And as always, there is a word coming forth just for you this evening. I want you to connect your spirit and I want you to prepare, begin to stir yourself and realize that it is time to pray. Share this broadcast right now. Let somebody know that it is time to pray. Voice of the prophet is on. There is a word coming forth just for you. Go ahead and prepare your spirit as you share this broadcast. Let it go far. Send it to whoever you know needs a word at this time. Send this broadcast to them and tell them they will be blessed. And without further ado, let us go straight into the presence of the Lord. Enter into the presence of the Lord with thanksgiving. Go ahead and lift up your voice this evening and thank the Lord for that which he has done and that which he is going to do in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we give you the praise and the thanks for you have guided us, for you have been with us, for you have protected us throughout this day, for you have brought us up until the end of this month and you have continued to care for 
for us as you have through the beginning of the year up until this point. Father, we are not worthy, but we are thankful. We are grateful unto you for your grace and your mercy, for your faithfulness that lasts longer than our lives. Lord, your faithfulness has outlived men. Lord, you are good and you are good in all of your ways for sending the Holy Spirit to tabernacle in us, for sending Jesus to die for us that we may have salvation, that the blood of your son can blot out our transgressions. Go ahead and give the Lord thanks this evening for that which he is doing in your life. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be included in your plan, for calling us forth to serve you, Lord, for it is a privilege to be able to serve the King of Kings, Yahweh, the Lord of Lords. We bless your holy name this evening. We thank you for that which you have done. We thank you for that which you are doing, that which we have not even seen in our lives, but we know you are at work. So we give you the thanks in advance, Lord, for that which will manifest shortly. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Next, we want to go ahead and ask the Lord for mercy this evening. The book of Psalms says, According to your tender mercies, blot out my transgression. So we're going to ask that the Lord, according to his tender mercies, attend, according to the multitude of his tender mercies, would blot out our transgressions by the blood of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and lift up your voice and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would have mercy upon your people, that your grace would rest upon us mightily this evening, that for any way we have fallen short, for indeed we have fallen short, we ask that your blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, would cover us, Lord God, would blot out our transgressions, would cover our iniquities, Lord God, and make us pure that we may stand before you on your holy hill. For your word says, who should stand before the Lord on his holy hill? Those whose hands are clean. Lord, let our hands be clean and wash our hands clean of anything, of any blood on our hands, of any stain of sin. Let our garments be white before you, Lord God, and blot out our every transgression that we may walk before you perfectly. In your mercy, correct us and direct our path that we may walk before you, Lord Jesus, perfectly as you called Abraham to walk before you perfectly. Let it be so in our lives. Father, correct our every wrong and direct us by your mercy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. And we want to ask that the Holy Spirit would tabernacle with us this evening, would dwell in our midst, would make himself present, would make his presence known, his presence known. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into that place where you are watching from, to dwell with you, to tabernacle with you, and to speak to you this evening, to bring about a word just for you. Invite the Holy Spirit into that place. Go ahead and lift up your voice. Holy Spirit, we invite you into our gathering, for we are gathered unto you and not unto men. We ask that you would guide us, that you would speak to us, that you would bring forth a word just for us this evening. Holy Ghost, you are Lord over our meeting. You are Lord over this house. We pray that, Holy Ghost, you would dwell in us, you would dwell with us, that you would baptize us afresh with your presence, that you would let your presence be felt in this place. We declare your lordship over our lives, over our families, over our churches, and we ask that you would dwell with us and that you would be made manifest in our presence, that you would make yourself real to us, that you would appear in our midst, that because two or three are gathered, Lord God, you would be here in our midst. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. And lastly, in the book of Luke, in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 49, it says, Jesus said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Until you are endued with with power from on high. So this evening we want to pray and ask the Lord for the grace to tarry, to tarry where he has called us to be until we have been endued with power, until we have been shifted to our next level, until the Lord brings about that which he wants to do next in our lives. So go ahead and say, my father, my father, in the name of Jesus, give me the grace to 
tarry until the next season which you have ordained for me. Go ahead and pray this prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask that you would bestow upon us a power, a grace to tarry until we have been bestowed with the next assignment which you have made for us. Lord God, until that assignment is made available, give us the grace and the power to tarry before you in that place which you have called us for to tarry. Father, bestow upon us that power, that grace that would cause us to tarry, that would give us the power to stay put, to stay in the place which you have called us to be. Lord, we give you the thanks and the praise for you have answered our prayers and we know we will see the answer and the manifestation of these things. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Go ahead and give the Lord thanks. Go ahead and give the Lord thanks for hearing your prayers this evening and begin to stir the atmosphere, stir your spirit and pray. Pray in the language of the spirit. Hold on to that expectation. I believe you came with an expectation. Hold on to that expectation and stir your spirit. Begin to pray in the language of the spirit this evening and prepare your spirit. Stir your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. And I would like to welcome to the podium our Father in the Lord, Baba Apostle. Welcome, sir. We honor you. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. It's nice to have you back on stage, not and, uh, uh, from campus, as, as it were. I, I wasn't expecting you to make it here tonight. All right, I welcome everyone to tonight. Praise God, it's been a heavy, ethic day, but the word of God is ever fresh. Amen. It will deliver and it will set free. Amen. In Jesus' name. Let's look at 2 Kings chapter 6. No, son, go to chapter 11. Second Kings chapter 11. Read from verse 1. Second Kings chapter 11 verse 1. When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal heirs. But Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons who were being murdered. And they hid him and his nurse in the bedroom from Athaliah so that he was not killed. So he was hidden with her in the house of the Lord for six years while Athaliah reigned over the land. In the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and brought the captains of hundreds of the bodyguards and the escorts and brought them into the house of the Lord to him. And he made a covenant with them and took an oath from them in the house of the Lord and showed them the king's son. Then he commanded them saying, this is what you shall do. One third of you who come on duty on the Sabbath shall be keeping watch over the king's house. One third shall be at the gate of Sir, and one third at the gate behind the escorts. You shall keep the watch of the house, lest it be broken down. The two contingents of you who go off duty on the Sabbath shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord for the king. But you shall surround the king on all sides every man with his weapons in his hand and whoever comes within range let him be put to death you are to be with the king as he goes out and as he comes in so the captains of the hundreds did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded each of them took his men who were on who were to be on duty on the sabbath with those who were going off duty on the sabbath and came to Jehoiada the priest and the priest gave the captains of hundreds the spears and shields which had belonged to King David that were in the temple of the Lord. Then the escort stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, all around the king. 
from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple by the altar and the house. And he brought out the king's son, put the crown on him and gave him the testimony. They made him king and anointed him and they clapped their hands and said, long live the king. Praise the Lord. What a powerful story. You know, not too many people are familiar with uh, the story of Atalia. Atalia happened to be the mother of the, what we call the queen mother, the mother of the king. No. And because of the wickedness of her son, the king, you know, he was killed. You no, know, you know, cutting the story very short, Ahaziah was killed, he died. And um, the mother, Atalia, went in and killed all the seed, all the possible princes that could take over after her son. She went in and killed all except one that was kept away, you know, from being killed, you know. And that was by our own sister, who is also a daughter of the the king, you know, took, you know, the young man, Joash, you know, and, and, and kept him. The Bible says, and he stole him, you know, he stole him, took him, or hijacked him, or kidnapped him, and went and hid him. Guess where he was hidden? In the temple. In the temple. Based on the Lord's instruction. I want to pray for somebody here tonight. There are destiny killers. There are killers of glory. There are people whose lifestyle is that whatever they cannot get, nobody should get it. Whatever they cannot lay hold on, they should not lay, nobody should lay hold on it. The reason why she killed all the princes was because her own son was killed. So every other person's son must be killed. Don't forget when Jesus was born. And he was born and his task was noticed by the wise men. They went and told Herod. Now we saw a star. No, and this star is like a star of a reigning king. Now, Eros said, go locate where he is so that I may also come and pay homage unto him. Right? Then he gave a command. He said to his men that wherever they find the child, he should be killed. But since he found out that the, the, the wise men did not give him the accurate location of where Jesus is, or where he was born, he gave a command that every newborn baby up to two years should be killed. Don't forget, he has just been told that the baby, a king had been born, a child had been born. So why would he kill children from day one to two years old? He didn't want to miss any opportunity by chance to, 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 to make Jesus escape his death sentence. So he extended, you know, his, his judgment to kill this destiny that had been born to rule that whoever is a baby old to two years old should not live. When Moses was to be born, are you following? Yes. When Moses was to be born, when Pharaoh found out that the Hebrew women, before the nurses get to them, they deliver their sons. 
And they were giving birth in hardship, under hard pressure. Now, the kind of labor the men of Israel were, were committed into, the kind of nature of what they give to them, their tax was multiplied by the tax master. They multiplied their labor. Why? So that they will not be able to get back home at night to touch their wives. That was the reason why the tax master increased the labor of the men. When you walk and you walk and you, you're tired, you don't remember you know, your responsibility as it were at home. So, but yet, the king found out that the Hebrew women were still getting pregnant. So where was the strength coming from? For them to even have the pregnancy, one, to have seen that their men had been overworked, overstretched. And then they would get pregnant. And then when they want to deliver, they deliver, you know, easily. Without hard labor. Now, somebody is watching here tonight in this season. Your delivery and your deliverance and your breakthrough and your success will come easy for you. Amen. So, you will see a pattern of... Certain people always aiming at killing you no know, particular kind of people who they consider to be uh, a threat to their domain, to their reign. There are some of you who are watching me here tonight. Some of the people around your life, they seek your death. They seek your, your evil of you. Why? Because your life is a shining star. You are a threat to their own existence. You wonder why people hate you, why people get angry at you. You wonder why you are coming out from one evil to another evil, one challenge to another challenge, one battle to another battle. Your life is surrounded by wickedness or wicked men. It's because of the kind of glory that is upon your life. The glory that is upon your life. Now, there are people who carry glory and yet they do not know that their glory is a shining glory. But what they see is that there is a consistent attack. This is how you know the kind of, how bright your glory is. Consistent attack, consistent conspiracy over your life. It's as if you are the only person living. If you look at the manner of attack that constantly come after you, it appears as if, am I the only person living here on earth? The reason is because of the glory that is upon your life. He says, and Natalia, the mother of Ahazia, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed, royal, all the royal seed. Not just ordinary seed, the royal seed. Anyone that is connected to the throne. I've come with the word of the Lord to someone here tonight. The Lord asked me to say to you, you will be delivered from the killer of destiny. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you shout a big amen there. Amen. Every destiny killer and destiny hijackers in your lineage with the sole aim to destroy you, I decree by the mercy of God, God of heaven will deliver you from them. Amen. And Atalia, the mother of Ahaziah, our own son was killed. Every other person's son must, be, must die. When their business fails, they want your business to fail. When, your, when their marriage fails, they want your marriage to fail. When they are losing favor, they want you to lose favor. When nothing is working for them, they want nothing to work for you. And some of them are your friends, people you call best 
of your friends. You wonder why every step you take is being aborted. Every step you take, this is somebody's situation right now by the mercy of the Lord. Every step you take to advance the journey of your life is being truncated, is being aborted. It's because there is an atalia in your jurisdiction, in your life. They know where you dwell, they know where you live, they know where you, what you do. They always, at, almost as if at the right timing, they come and appear to just destroy you, to, to terminate all your effort. When you are sure of an harvest coming, suddenly there's a wastage. By the hand of Jehovah, I prophesy to someone here tonight, the power of the Almighty God deliver you from destiny hijackers. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But see, the beauty of this story is that in the midst of this conspiracy, Joash's life was preserved because of another faithful woman who is also a sister to the mother of Ahaziah. Hmm. Let me help somebody here. Let's assume Joash was able to say, no, you, but you are related to Atalia. I won't go with you. Are you listening to me? Knowing fully that they are, they are blood related. No, I can't go with you. Maybe you are taking me to go and actually kill me for At At Atalia. Right? There's a possibility. Now, there are people whose life is str stranded today because they pick up another man's battle. A battle that is not theirs. I will explain that. You have just become somebody else's enemy because that person is connected to your arch enemy. So you assume everybody is an enemy. This is why some, some, this is why some people are losing helpers of destiny. Some people look at you and say, well, I mean, those days I used to be very foolish like that. Mm, I used to be very, very foolish. <laughs> if, if, uh, because I lack discernment. And this is why people fall into that trap. Your best friend enemy does not necessarily have to be your own enemy. Because sometimes the reason why your best friend is having an issue with that so-called enemy God, help me to analyze this now. Might not have anything to do with your own destiny. But this, your friend, now wants to involve you in that battle. And spoil your heart towards that individual. Sometimes knowing fully well that your help your favor is right there. Sometimes the person you're trying to stand with could actually be your own enemy. Who decided to become the enemy of this guy because he knows that your own help is with that guy. I don't know if you are following me. Yes, sir. Somebody who is close to you can choose to become an enemy of your own helper of destiny. Not because he is having an issue with that individual, but because he wants to ensure that you don't get lifted above him. So, every child of God needs to have what I call the, the gift of the assignment to know what manner of men around them. What manner of men around them. Sorry, I don't know if you follow. Yes, sir. 
So Joash followed Jehoshaphat. Followed him. She carried the boy. He was little. Carried the boy. Went and hid him. And he was there for six solid years in the temple. I want to bring out a mystery there. Six is the number of man. It was on the sixth day that God created man. And on the seventh day, he rested. So he was kept in the lost temple for six years. By the seventh year, there was a, a way for escape. A way out for him to manifest to the throne. While he was hidden in the temple for six years, Atalia was ruling. She took over the throne. But Joash kept himself hidden in the temple where he was kept. Some of you, the reason why your life is messed up is that where God is trying to keep you is where you are trying to go out from. For six years, Joash stayed in the temple, stayed in God. For you to mature on the, at the seventh year to manifest glory, you need to tarry it until you are formed in the image and likeness of God as a man. It took six years for Josh, Josh to be prepared to appear on the throne. And I'm bringing a connection to our convention. Now, this is our seventh year of this assignment here in the state. Now, here it is. God is going to use this season as we prepare for this celebration to release some of you into your glory place. Amen. Into the place of honor. Amen. It's like for six years you have been hidden. There are people. It's like for six years you have been kept in the dark. It's like for six years your glory had been hijacked. It's as if for six years nobody had heard about you. In fact, it's as if for six years you have been confirmed dead. Because Joas, nobody knew it was Atalia did not know that he was still alive. She thought that when she killed all the, the royal seed, she perceived that Joas is already among them. But unknown to her that God was preserving Joas in the secret place. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I prophesy to you that from the hand of, of God and by the oil of grace upon my life, the one that preserved Joash will preserve you. Amen. He was preserved in the temple and nobody knew, nobody had it. This is the mystery of preservation, divine preservation. The mystery of divine preservation is is tied to secrecy. Divine secrecy. I put it that way. Somebody definitely know that Joash was in the temple. But those that are aware of him there did never expose him out. Because they know that there's an enemy out there. Somebody is out there hiding and jealousy and striving because of your marriage, because of your destiny, because of your glory, because of your testimonies, because of your academics, because of your life progress, because of your success story, because of the things that the Lord is doing for you in this season. They are plotting and they want to terminate and truncate all of your effort. But by the hand of God, their plans and their purposes against your life is cut out by fire. Amen. Atalia was on the throne, but she had no knowledge of where Joash was kept. Because people, I said this, the, the mystery of divine protection is in divine secrecy. May God 
Keep people around you that can keep your secret. Amen. Hmm. They knew he was there, but they didn't reveal him. He was in the temple. He was in the temple. He was in the temple. Look at verse 4. And the seventh year. Read that, verse 4. In the seventh year, yes. Jehoiada sent and brought the captains. Jehoiada sent and fetched what? The captains of hundreds uh -huh. of the bodyguards and the escorts mm -hmm. and brought them into the house of the Lord mm -hmm. to him. And he made a covenant with them and took an oath from them in the house of the Lord mm -hmm. and showed them the king's son. And showed them the king's son. After that, he had entered a covenant with them. Hear me? You want your life to be divinely ordered and protected and lifted. You want to express lifting in your life. You need men that have entered covenant with you. You need covenant friends. You need covenant friends. You need covenant partners, even in your business. Anybody who is a casual friend can become the reason for your casualty. Casual friends are the reason for many casualties. Casual friends, casual family members, casual relatives are the reason why many people are being troubled in life. He's my, he's my friend. He's, my, he's just casual friend. But your casual friends, you know, <laughs> he's the reason for casualties. You need covenant friend. David had one. It's called Jonathan. So when Jonathan's father was aiming at killing David, Jonathan, because he was a covenant friend of David, he was exposing the wickedness of his father towards David. And he made a covenant. I won't be alive for you to die. Covenant. There are many of us that God wants to set loose, but we need to enter a place of covenant relationship. Not only with God. Joshua, jo, jo, uh, Josh, for the fact that he was kept in the temple means he entered a covenant with God. But guess what? The people, the captains that were brought in were made to enter covenants. Before they know where he was kept. That says at the temple. He brought them, the guides, the captains and the guy. He brought them into the house of the Lord. And made a covenant with them. You see, the most dangerous place on earth and in heaven is the temple, is the church. A place of power, a place of authority. Anything that is bound there is bound in heaven. Anything that is losing there is set loose. <clears throat> Excuse me. He brought them to the temple and made them to enter covenant. Right? In the temple, not in a shrine. Not, not, not on the altar of demons. He brought them before the Lord in the house of the Lord. Any friend that does not know the Lord, that has no relationship on the altar, with the altar, is a suspect. Somebody is not hearing me tonight. Anyone that has no relationship with the altar, with you, has no covenant relationship with the Lord on the altar, with you, is a dangerous friend. Because it takes the altar... To alter the plans of the enemies. It takes the altar to alter the plans of the wicked. When battle is fierce, you bring it to the altar. Hmm.
When you are in covenant with God, he reveals the plans of your enemies to you. He reveals, you know. Let me share something very interesting. Hmm. You know, I had a revelation. I saw myself in a particular home of somebody. I entered there and I, I was there. And I was observing what was happening in that house. A lot of confusion. A stranger came in into that house and was creating unpleasant situation in that family, for that family. And there was so much confusion and I was watching. And there was so much confusion I was watching. And I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And then I woke up. Now, I was in the office today. And somebody called me and said, sir, somebody asked that they, they wanted a particular information about them. And they wanted to know from me whether they should give that information to them. Guess what? It is the face I saw in the revelation that was demanding for an information from these people. When I had that revelation, I didn't understand it because I didn't see that face in question. Mm -mm. I didn't see that face clearly in question. But when the call came in, the revelation became a, a clearer picture. There are places that God wants to take you into. There are things that God wants to do with your life. But listen to me. There are people who should not be around you or with you because they are, they are not in covenant relationship with you and your God. What terminates battles of life, long outstanding battle, is covenant. Covenant. And the commander, you know, gave a command to the captains and the guides, cut a covenant on this altar. After the deed, you see today, people fear covenants made with the devil than the one they make in church. Because they think God, you know, God doesn't get angry. <laughs> they say, God, you know, the God of the church, he, you know, he's, he's very gentle. <laughs> he's not so. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> they say, say, people will enter covenants People will make vow. People will make pledges. People will make promises. And then they'll just take it casual on the altar of the Lord. No. The altar is a sacred place. The church is a sacred place. Marriages that is entered into on the altar is more guaranteed if it's entered genuinely on the altar, relationship that is covenanted on the, is more guaranteed than relationship that you do outside the altar. Are you hearing me? Yes, Anybody that cannot come to the altar with you to cut a covenant is a dangerous fellow. Hmm? People can go to court of law make, to sign contracts, to make agreements. They can involve their, their, their lawyer. It's okay. Legally, it's good. But they will, they, will out, they, will, they, will, they will not involve God. Mm -mm. 
as you do legal co contract with people, you must ensure that people enter contract with you on the altar of God. There are many Italians looking for destinies to, to be hijacked. But tonight, wherever you are, I want you to lift up your right hand and begin to decree. Say, Lord, deliver me from Italia, the destiny killer. Wherever you are, glory is being released right now upon your life to manifest your God's giving favor and blessings. But begin to say, Lord, every, every destiny I jacker, every glory I jacker, seeking my death, seeking my waste, Lord, lika pala garaka tadish. Somebody is not praying. Lord, deliver me. From these destiny killers, these destiny hijackers, in your father's house, in your lineage, in your family, in your community. Yes, pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Go seeking my destruction, Lord, deliver me from them. The God that delivered Joash from Atalia will deliver you tonight. Pray, pray, pray. Lord, deliver me from destroyers of glory. Deliver me from destroyer of blessings. Deliver me from destroyers. Yes. Chains have been broken. Fetters have been destroyed. 
Rupa sapra kaya da ba sapra kanta lag. Roku do ba ya da ba sapra kanda lag. Kada ba lag kada ba sapra kada lag kwa ba lag sapra kai. Empele kati ya da bele kupa lag kada ba sapra kata ya da ba lag kanda ba sapra kai. Empele kupa pa rakata ya da ba sapra kanta sapra kata ya da ba. Rakendele kidi ya da ba kada ba lag kwa pa sapra kada ba sapra kai. Empele kati ya da bele kada bele kupa la pa kata ba sapra kai ya da ba lag kwa. The mighty hand of God. Is released. Is released now. Yes, somebody's been delivered. Sickness and diseases is being rolled away. Barrenness is gone. Causes are being broken. The miraculous is released. The miraculous is released. The miraculous is released. That tumor is melting away by the power of the Holy Ghost. The burden on your chest is being lifted. Someone is hearing me tonight. Your, your heart is heavy. The burden is being lifted now. That plane crash is 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 cancelled. Now I cancel that attack. Yes, I cancel that accident. The Italian that wants to kill your glory, that wants to terminate your life, the hand of the Lord destroyed them. I see the hand of the Lord coming upon your life. That strange migraine is gone now. Is gone now. Is gone now. The chest pain is gone now. The chest pain is gone now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I see cancer being destroyed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, 
I rebuke cancer to its roots. I rebuke cancer to its roots. I kill the, the life of cancer in that body now. 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 The appointment with death is cancelled by the Spirit of the Lord. What killed others is not permitted to kill you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm seeing a situation of somebody that you coughed and blood followed. You coughed blood. And this is a strange experience for you. You coughed and, you know, when you spit out the mucus, you saw particles of blood, stain of blood. I rebuke that infirmity by the hand of the Lord. Even now. Even now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Every form of internal eat in the body, internal eat. Right now, I rebuke that sickness. Every sickness and afflictions that is called internal eat, you are having eat, you know, eat sensation in your body internally, you know, inside of your body. Not, not the layer out body, the inside of you. There's this sensation of fire burning. Leproskite, I quench that fire. I command the release of God's peace in your body. Amen. Now. Amen. Somebody go ahead and make a thank God for all healings that has taken place in the at atmosphere. The healing power has been released into the atmosphere. The supernatural is taking its effects in the life of all men. The supernatural is taking its effects in the life of men. Glory that had been hijacked, that had been diverted, being, being restored. Even now. Even now. Even now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, hearing the name Abi Batu, Abi, Abi Batu, by the Spirit of the Lord, I prophesy the appointment of untimely death over that life. You are watching right now. This individual might be a cousin, might be a your sister the power of death over their over our life is cancelled now amen in the name of jesus christ amen thank you jesus thank you lord thank you holy ghost thank you holy ghost thank you holy ghost Thank you, Holy Ghost. Libra la gara 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 gara. Oh yes, the Spirit of the Lord is here. Oh yes. Yes, 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 yes. Deliverance in the atmosphere.
Father, we thank you. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. You know, son, somebody he just showed me a revelation a very strange. This fellow fetch, I saw this fellow fetching water. He was fetching water from a particular bowl or with a, with a glass cup, very transparent glass cup. As soon as the water was fetched, it was a clean water. As soon as the water was fetched and he was about to drink, behold, it became a very dirty water. The power of the Lord asked me to declare right now that every poison that had been stationed to destroy your life, every demonic orchestration that will turn to a poison in your body, I destroy it right now. Amen. I destroy it right now. Amen. What he thought he was fetching what was water, but what he was he actually fetched, it's a poison. I rebuke that spirit of deception and of death over someone's life. This is so true. You are free. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody go ahead and give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. You are there. Send him your prayer requests. Send your testimonies. We'd like to hear from you what God is doing for you and in you and through you and don't hold back your testimonies testimonies are tools of deliverance and total freedom they overcame him by the blood of the land and by the words of their testimony you want to have an everlasting victory share the testimony of the doings of God in your life no matter how little you think it is share that testimony and give praise and glory to God and he will do more for you. You are watching yes tonight, wherever you are watching from, I'd like you to give a prophetic seed as a prophet of God. I'm sowing this prophetic seed into your life. I'm connecting with my miracle. I am believing God for an establishment. In every areas of my life, you are trusting God for the Lord to establish you in every areas of your life sow that seed of faith you're believing god for a lifting sow that seed glory be to god hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah the information is right here on the screen i pray for every sower you will have great harvest in the name of jesus christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. It's done. Somebody shout a big amen. Amen. I believe you have been blessed tonight. So what, what are we having here tomorrow? We are having word impact service at 7.30 p.m. Don't miss it. It will be explosive. 7 30 p.m. tomorrow night, word in past service. The word has been producing great harvest in you know and in the life of God's people, you know, in all in all ramification, great harvest, things changing, life being transformed, you know, 
destiny is being lifted. Join us tomorrow night in our ministry here in Woodbridge, 14851 Build American Drive. The information is right here on the screen. Join us tomorrow night. And if you're far away, join us uh, online just on the same platform or on YouTube or Oasis Global Television. We'll be glad to have you there. And the God of heaven, the God that I serve, will appear unto you even tonight and show you favor. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I greet everyone, the media team. I celebrate every one of you. Thank you, everyone who is in house and online. God bless you. You are coming back with your testimony. Now, this is the word. Nothing will steal your joy. I want you to say that to yourself. Nothing will steal my joy. God bless you. We love you. Good night.